In this video, we are going to talk about life expectancy and determinants of health. Life expectancy has more than doubled since the beginning of the 19th century. In the 1950, a human being would expect to live 46 years on average. In the beginning of the 20th century, 67 years. The expectancy of life for a baby born today is more than 77 years. In the next century, a human born can expect to live up to 82 years. This is explained by a combination of factors, such as advances in medicine, socioeconomic development, lifestyles, and improved general living conditions. However, conditions around the world and in countries belonging to the same continent differ. As you can see, in Europe, the actual expectancy of life at birth is superior to 80 years in Portugal, Greece and Cyprus, but is around 75 years in Latvia and Lithuania. In the north and center of Portugal, the expectancy of life is superior to Algarve region in the south. Even at the same city, the expectancy of life may differ. According to the Aero Healthy Project, over a distance of only 8 kilometers across the Lisbon metro line, we see differences. The life expectancy for those born in São Domingos Benfica is 80 years, while a person living in the Santa Maior neighborhood will on average live 74 years. These differences may be explained by aging, social and labor conditions, access to employment and education, health literacy, individual choices in relation to health, dynamics of local environments, and access to high-quality healthcare services. All these are determinants of health. So to improve health, reduce illness and have great quality of life, we need to consider lifestyles, individual choices in relation to health, dietary patterns, practice of physical activity, sexual behavior, tobacco consumption, illicit substance use, among others. We should also understand the impact of environment, social relationships and general living conditions. Living conditions refer to the context in which people live and work. These may be the general socioeconomic conditions, such as access to employment, house, water, sanitation, fresh food, education, healthcare services, culture, access to clean and affordable energy, and the design of public space. Spaces shape up possibilities or barriers for people to play, exercise, stay in contact with nature and connect with each other. They reflect opportunities for carbon sequestration and oxygen supply, which improves air quality and prevents respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. Their configuration defines the level of walkability for citizens and adoption of soft transportation modes, which influences quality of life and independence of all people. The design of urban space also influences exposition to stress and heat, which are risk factors for strokes. The main social and environmental determinants of health may be addressed by the guidance of the United Nations Agenda for Sustainable Development, namely by the targets defined for the Sustainable Development Goals. The best way to understand this is by mapping the general attributes of a healthy community. When we think about the community plenty of health and quality of life, some attributes immediately come up. People are employed, and have access to a good work, businesses get the money they need to survive and grow, people pay affordable prices for goods, and have access to healthcare services. Institutions are effective in their work, accountable, inclusive, buildings are energy efficient, employers and employees are committed to a friendly environment that promotes health and well-being at work. Organizations deliver people-centered services, and appropriate support to those with special needs or in a vulnerable situation. The houses are affordable, the community of resi residents stay, 
and is comfortable with living there. People have access to local, affordable, fresh and nutritious food, and there are public places to play and exercise that residents used also to connect socially. A healthy community is also a place where residents are connected by the purpose of reducing the ecological footprint and engage public and private initiatives with this aim. Public policy brings opportunities for people to contribute to community gardens, to grow fruits and vegetables, sell in local markets and consume it. Residents use soft transportation modes such as bicycles in their routines and have access to a good and affordable public transportation network that allows them to stay active and independent so they can participate in the social life of the community, join initiatives and use the available facilities and services. It is a place that provides great access to public spaces and buildings. There is no energy poverty because people have access to clean and affordable energy, use it in a sustainable manner and avoid waste. Houses indoor temperatures around 18 degrees according to the recommendations of World Health Organization. And sustainable modes of production, harmful for life or on land or below water, are rejected by the community. Deforestation, food insecurity, abusive use of antibiotics and pesticides is rejected due to its effects on the planet and consequences in human health. The community moves together towards supporting people in a situation of hunger and poverty, stimulates young ones to go to school and achieve good results, doesn't accept unequal distribution of opportunities among members, drinks high-quality water, and has easy access to information that is fundamental to make choices concerning their health. In summary, healthy communities assure natural areas where people have appropriate conditions for outdoor activities, have facilities for physical exercise, and conditions to reinforce their mental health, to enact healthy lifestyles, to use green transportation modes, and join walkable and secure spaces, to consume fresh products, to reduce exposition to environmental risks in terms of air quality, pollutants, stress and heat. These are also spaces where people can join initiatives, creating awareness about public health risks, become committed with its suggested individual and community actions, and advocate for better solutions in terms of public policy. These natural areas may include urban gardens where people can grow food and plant, learn new skills, meet the neighbors and improve their health. Is this your reality? How may you contribute to your community health?